our healthcare system uses the RTLS. I would say the most obvious is for managing our assets. So by that I mean the equipment that we have in, in patient-facing areas. Obviously with an 885 bed hospital, we have a lot of equipment, IV poles and things like that. That's just one, one example. And so with that RTLS, we're able to look at, at any given time to see where our equipment is. And so we can retrieve it when it is needed and bring it to the uh, requesting location as quickly as possible. I think it also prevents the hoarding. You know, nurses are famous for hoarding equipment. And so if we uh, feel we might have to wait on an IV pump, then the nurses will sort of hoard an IV pump. And what the RTLS system has enabled us to do is to manage the flow of our assets. And then there are a few other examples, telemetry equipment, et cetera. Oftentimes when patients leave the organization by ambulance, if we, we can stop something, a piece of equipment from inadvertently leaving the campus uh, and losing an asset that way. So some of the processes that have changed with the RTLS, I think I, I referenced those in my previous response, but basically the, the ability to know where equipment is, and I would say the transport service, well, that's a, a very good example. Wheelchairs are always a challenge. And so the transporters um, were able to identify where the transport fleet is based on the RTLSs that are associated with wheelchairs. So now we are in front of the, the requesting uh, process or being able to anticipate needs and manage assets in advance, which is a big thing because I think, uh, you know, most of the time when you're looking for equipment, you're in a, a retro mode, but to be able to anticipate where, where we would have need and, and locate equipment in that region in advance of the need so that we can be more timely in our responses. So a, a very good example of the value of RTLS in terms of compliance. So the Joint Commission obviously has regulation and so does the Department of Public Health have regulation around temperature monitoring of refrigerators so that we make sure that we don't ever have uh, drugs stored in a refrigerator that falls below the required temperature. Vaccines are a, a very sensitive um, drug for that. So we, we are required by Joint Commission and, and by the state and to make sure that we monitor the temperature of our refrigerators. And so um, without the RTLS technology, what we have to do is manual checks. And manual checks, again, are also retroactive, right? So you only find the problem after it has occurred. But with the spot technology or the RTLS technology for monitoring refrigeration, we have alarms that are established that if we will know immediately if there's a problem and can respond to it immediately. And it has eliminated nursing having to go around daily and, uh, and, and pharmacy, et cetera, to have to go around and monitor those on our own. Our patients benefit from the RTLS system in, in certain fashions. Obviously, uh, people hate to wait. And so if we think about how we move patients, uh, how we inform patients of their wait times, we have to know where they are and we uh, have to be able to cue patients when they come into clinics, et cetera. You know, I'm a person who hates to wait. I think the American mentality is one of immediacy. We'll wait five minutes and then that's too long. So patients um, have to wait oftentimes when they come into clinics or the emergency department. When we are able to provide them to know where they are and provide them with technology that, that lets them know how much longer their wait time is, it's managing expectations in a different fashion. And I think it's also respectful of people's time. That's a core component of our patient and family promise is we will respect you and your time, but we can't actually do that if we keep, keep people waiting and aren't able to inform them about their wait time. So that's been, I think, a, a pleaser in the locations that we've act, enacted that. And like many old academic centers, we've uh, evolved in time. So this building and then that building and then this building, and we're always short on space. So it doesn't always make sense where things are located. And it's a lot of walking just to get from place A to, to part, you know, spot A to spot B. And that's one thing to do when you're well and you work here. It's another thing to do when you're sick or in a wheelchair or pushing people in a wheelchair or children in strollers and they just can't find things. So this has been great. We can actually download the Wayfinding app and it has GPS through the spot technology. And then we, the a patient or family member and staff, I find I have at times had to use it myself to find out where I need to go. And then it will, uh, it works just like any other GPS and it'll walk you through the building and uh, assist in the directions. That helps a lot because I'm, I'm not convinced that it's 100% realistic that we will always be able to walk every patient to where they need to go. Now, once we take eyes off our loved ones in the healthcare system, we become afraid. That's just a natural human tendency. 
easier for adults, but it's really hard for children. So the more we get more feedback we can provide patients and families through the technology, the, um, the more informed they feel, the less anxiety they feel, and the more respected they feel. We have a spot technology badge that we attach to our employee badge, and it has a panic button on that. And that panic button, uh, staff can push it at any time when they feel that they are in an unsafe situation. And then immediately security is able to identify their location and to respond. And we have we use that frequently. Um, I'm fortunate to, to say, but healthcare is, hospitals are big places. And sometimes we have situations that occur where staff may feel unfriendly, either um, because they're having to exit the building at night and it's dark, or they have uh, a problematic situation with a patient or a family. And so we are able to have security response immediately. And there is a great sense of uh, safety with the SPOT technology for the staff protection. Many of our departments benefit from the RTLS system. Our pharmacy department benefits from the refrigeration monitoring. Our compliance department benefits from that because then they actually have uh, re recorded documentation of our compliance with requirements around refrigeration and temperature monitoring. Nursing especially benefits from it because we are able to identify equipment when it's needed. So if it's an IV pump or it's a telemetry machine or it's uh, something along those lines, it's able to be to found and located in a timely fashion. And that's valuable. Uh, more time wasted is uh, not value added time. Transporters benefit from it because they're able to identify wheelchairs when they need it. Same thing for stretchers in the ED. So everybody benefits from the RTLS system. I, I don't know that we could actually find a good example of people that don't. And I think the, the more comfortable we've become with it, it's now such a norm in our organization that if you took it away, uh, we would have, we, it would be very obvious all the disadvantages that would uh, recur in the absence of that technology. Collaboration between the clinical side and the infinite leap to start to envision what really can be done differently through the technology that drastically changes the care that patients receive and that it improves their receiving it in a timely manner. That to me for nursing would be um, such a value add and, and creates not just a ROI for the, for the technology, but it creates an ethical base for it.